what if I told you that while you're watching this video, I have three AI coding agents working in the background on my code project. I've got one agent building a complete front end just from a screenshot. I've got another agent building out a complete back end database for me. And I've got a third agent reviewing all the code that these assistants put together to see if there's any major bugs, flaws, or vulnerabilities. By the end of this video, you'll see exactly how to put these three coding agents to work on your project. And I promise you'll be amazed by the results. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what are Claude Code sub agents and why even use them in the first place? They're basically special purpose agents with a given special area of expertise. So basically they can automate repetitive tasks that require a lot of context or expertise. You can feed that context right into the sub agents file, which we'll show you how to set up in a second. And that will drive how the agent analyzes your code and performs tasks. They help solve one of the big problems of just working with the main Claude Code agent, and that's managing context. This is the biggest benefit, and you can see in this documentation, each sub agent has its own context window separate from the main conversation. What this means is that instead of having to constantly clear and compact your context within Claude Code, if you're using Claude Code, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a huge pain to constantly manage this because as the context window runs out, you're getting worse results, but you can offload some of that context onto these sub agents and free up context for the main agent to do work as well. Each sub agent is created and managed by a .md file that has a specific name description, prompt, and set of tools that guide how the subagent performs its tasks. And if you go to the Anthropic documentation here, it's got a lot of helpful tips on how to create agents. And we will start setting up our own subagents in just a second. If you go here, you can see some basic templates here that they provided, like a code reviewer, a debugger, a data scientist, as well as some best practices on setting them up. So let's see them in action. So these are the three subagents that we're going to be building today. If you look here, we've got a front-end architect agent self-explanatory. This builds your app's user interface. We've got a database agent that builds your app's backend database. And we have a bug bot QA agent. And this basically does quality reviews, debugs, and looks for vulnerabilities in your code. So let's see how to set up each of these one by one. Let's start with the front end architect agent. This is the agent that's going to help us build our user interface. First, we're going to need to set up two tools that our sub agent will need to access in order to make the best front end it possibly can. And that's the V0 API and the Playwright MCP. So V0, if you're not familiar, I pulled up v0.dev. It is Vercel's platform for generating React-based app interfaces. So go to v0.deb, sign up for an account to generate an API key. Now this is not a free service, but v0, in my opinion, is the best tool for generating front end. In order to generate an API key, once you sign up for an account, you'll go here and it will have a link right here. And I'll put this down in the show notes to generate an API key. And that will take you to this page where you can just click on new key. And you can see I've already set one up for the sub agents demo today. I will revoke this when the tutorial is done, but this is where you get your API key. Now, Playwright, if you're not familiar, is a browser automation tool. It lets Claude actually see what the app looks like in the browser. Playwright has an MCP server that you can integrate directly into Claude Code and other AI coding tools. Now I have a tutorial on how to use Playwright with Claude Code, but just to refresh, you can add this MCP to Claude Code with one simple command. To add the Playwright MCP server, you just type this command right here. I'll copy it down in the show notes below so that you don't have to memorize it here. One thing I wanna show you guys, V0 does not have an MCP server that's published by Vercel. There is a community MCP server, but it doesn't have much traction on GitHub, and so I'm not really sure about using it in this demo. So what I've done is actually create a custom slash command in Claude code, and I actually just asked Claude Opus to generate this for me, so I did not have to write it. But this is the only way I can get the v0 API to work in Claude code by using this custom slash command called v0 generate. Now, in order to make the slash command work, once you add any MCP server or add any slash command to Claude code, you will need to restart Claude code that, so that it has access to the those tools. And in order to get your V0 API key that we just generated a few steps before this, in order to get that visible by the slash command, you can type export V0 API key equals and then paste your API key surrounded by quotes and press enter and that will load it into the terminal session you're working with right now. And immediately after you type that, type Claude to start up Claude code. 
and you can use the custom slash command. Now let's look at the front end architect agent. Now, how do you create agents? How do you even build something like this in the first place? Well, Claude code makes it super easy. There's an agents command here where you type forward slash agents, and you can see I've got all three agents we're working with in the video today, but there's also a way to create a new agent and you can set it to your project or your personal directory, and you can either manually configure it or generate it with Claude code so it actually writes it for you. And that's what I've done through some iterations with this, as well as the Claude Opus chat interface to really refine these agent frameworks. So now that we have the front end agent running, let's put in a simple prompt here. I want to build a notes app that is inspired by the Bear Markdown Notes app. I like the style of this app, and I want to see if our front end architect agent can build something that looks like this. Now I've had Claude create a prompt here that I've saved at PromptMD. So I'm just going to type, use the front end architect sub agent to create an app according to the specifications set forth in PromptMD, where we have our detailed prompt right here and according to the screenshot that I just showed you, and you can tag each of these by typing at and then the file that's in your root directory. So let's press enter and see what it comes back with. So what this front end architect does is it uses the v0 generate slash command that we just created and that I just showed you, and that calls the v0 API to create a front end user interface for you. But then this agent also has access to other tools like the Playwright MCP to verify that the app actually matches is the specifications and the image, any inspiration that you give it, it's going to keep comparing what V0 produces and what Claude code is writing for you and compare that to the screenshot to make sure the app looks the way you want. So it really does truly create something based on a screenshot. Now, a bit of warning, the V0 API can be a bit slow. If you use V0 in the chat interface at v0.dev, it is much faster. But if we're using the API and try to integrate it with other AI coding tools, I do find that it runs a bit slower but that's okay because I found that the results are still really good. So let's wait for our front end architect to come back with a result and let's see how it did. So just a quick check in, and this is why doing these experiments real time with you guys is so interesting. Uh, so I have been using this before with the custom slash command, and I noticed that the results were sometimes a little weird. Sometimes it just bypassed the V0 API key and just started using Claude code instead to make the front end. And I was seeing that it wasn't actually hitting my API usage when I logged into my V0 dashboard. So what I did instead, and this will be in the GitHub link down in the show notes for the code from this session, I've retooled the front end architect to actually just integrate all of the tools necessary to call the V0 API and not even use a custom slash command. Again, slash commands are great, but I'm finding that sub agents don't always use them so well. And this is one example where, again, I think to give you guys the best possible output and quality, I'm gonna just have the sub agent do everything in one file. So we'll check back when, when V0 is finished, but just to give you a progress update, I have rerun the prompt I had before with this current updated sub agent file for the front end architect. Okay, so it took a few minutes, but it just finished up and this looks really good. Actually looks like if anyone's familiar with the Bear app and if not, the screenshot showed what it kind of looks like, it really created a nice looking Markdown Notes app. And the V0 API, if anybody is worried about you know cost here, you can see that uh, that API call that we did to make the app cost four cents. So it's it's really not that much at all. And uh, I think it's a it's a pretty good value because V0 is is very accurate. Claude is awesome at making front end, but I think V0 is even just a little better. So we've got a working front end now, but what if we want a back end so that users can store data? We need a database, and so I'm going to use one of the more popular database options out there, and that's super. Base. I like Superbase and I find that it is very easy to use. It has a lot of different functionality, including authentication, but today we're just going to be using it for its Postgres database functionality. So go to superbase.com. You can sign in and create a free account. They have a pretty good free tier. And once you have an account, navigate to your dashboard and create a new project. So to create a new project, once you're on your dashboard, you just click new project here. You can see I've set up a Claude Code subagents demo project just for purposes of today. Once you have a Superbase account and a project, you can install the Superbase MCP server. Now, why would you want to do that? If you've ever worked with a backend database before, you know that to manually create tables and manually interact 
interact with the database, you have to enter SQL commands. And that can be very difficult and somewhat burdensome for new coders and people just getting started on their apps. Even though Cursor or Claude or whatever coding tools you're using might tell you the exact commands to use, it takes some time to copy and paste those commands and put them into the Superbase editor to get what you want. The MCP automates all of that for you. So Claude code right from the command line is accessing your Superbase project and applying all the settings it needs to to create the database without you touching anything. So to install the Superbase MCP, I will include this link in the show notes. You will first need to create a personal access token. This can be done via Superbase settings. There's a link right here. Once you've set up an account, it will take you to where you need to go. You need to copy and paste that token somewhere because you won't be able to access it again. And you will use that in the command that you're going to put into Claude Code. Okay, so to install the Superbase MCP into Claude Code, you enter this command right here. And it's kind of a long one, so I'll put this down in the show notes. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste it. But when you copy and paste it, make sure that you replace the insert token here with the personal access token that you just generated. So press enter and you will have Superbase MCP installed. Make sure to restart Claude Code once you do that so that Claude Code has access to the Superbase MCP. Now, for the database agent, this is the MD file that governs that agent. And basically it's a list of rules and prompts that govern how it works. And really this relies mostly on the Superbase MCP. So let's use the database agent to create a Superbase database backend for our app to store notes. Press enter and the database agent will get to work. So what this will do, it will check to see what projects you have in your Superbase. That's why we had to create a project earlier because it's going to access them and see what's in your Superbase account. Okay, so it's come up with a list of to-dos here to create user tables, folders, notes, tags, and actually implement row level security, which is very important for Superbase. And see, it's creating the SQL commands right now so you don't even have to do anything. So you don't have to copy and paste back and forth between here and your Superbase dashboard dashboard online. I'm going to let it work through each of these to do's and come check back in just a second to see how it did. Okay. So one of the really cool parts about the Superbase MCP, if you do coding projects, you know how annoying it is to manage API keys in a .env file. The Superbase MCP actually pulls the Superbase Anon key as well as your database URL in order to create a .env local for you that actually has the environment variables you need to create the database. It's awesome. I didn't actually create the .env local file. It did this all for me. As you can see, it's finished with the database backend, uh, but it hasn't connected it to the front end yet. So I'm just going to ask it to connect the database to my React front end. Now, one thing about sub agents, because they are not always working together, they're a little bit siloed. The main agent is, which is what we're working with right now in Claude code actually has to piece together the puzzle pieces sometimes between these sub agents. So it's creating some to do's to basically link what we did with the first agent and the second agent. Okay. So it just finished connecting the front end and the back end. Let's see if it works for creating a new note. All right, let's call it hello world and my first note and save it. And then we're going to go back and check to see if it actually made it into the database. Okay. So now I've gone back into Claude code and I just want to make sure that that note that we just created in the front end is indeed in the Superbase database. So it is calling the MCP to check on that for me. And I'm assuming it's there, but let's, let's pray. Yep it's there. So the database is working. As you can see, there's reference in this prompt to authentication. Now, one thing I didn't show here was that while the main agent was connecting the front end work of the front end architect and the back end work of the database agent, it was asking me if I wanted to create an authentication flow too using Superbase and the MCP. Now, authentication can get a little bit hairy and I find that Superbase is not the easiest to set up. I actually prefer Clerk for authentication, but this is so cool that they can use the MCP and these two sub agents to create an auth workflow for you if you wanted to do that. Okay, so now we have two sub agents creating a bunch of code. We got the front end architect creating our UI and we got the database agent that created a bunch of back end files for us. But is this code any good? Are there bugs in it? Now, there might be some bugs that you could easily see from demoing the app as I just did, but there might be stuff lurking in the code itself that you can't really see. And that's why I wanted to create a sub agent for code review. Now, I was inspired by the cursor bug bot actually, which is a super cool tool, but it is paid. You have to pay $20 a month 
and this is on top of using actual cursor, which also costs at least $20 a month to use. So what if we could do something similar? It's not gonna be quite as good, but what if we could use Claude Code and the subagent feature to do our own sort of automated code review? So that is what the Bugbot QA specialist does. And here is the prompt and the tools and descriptions and everything that govern it. And basically it will detect different bugs, critical, high priority, medium, and other things. It will automate some tests and it will recommend some fixes. Now, what we'll do is we'll say, use the Bugbot QA agent to review all the code that has been generated and find any bugs and fix them. So let's see what the agent comes back with. Okay, so the Bugbot QA agent just wrapped up and you can see that the bug detection and fixes are complete. It goes through all the critical fixes it made, some security and performance enhancements, user experience enhancement, and code quality. We get a score of 95 and a security score of nine out of 10, performance grade A, and accessibility 85 out of 100. So this is super cool. There's areas for improvement, but again, this is a very basic app that we've created for this demo. Obviously not something that is production ready, but the QA agent is still checking all these things and making sure there aren't any major flaws. So one final interesting thing you can do here, we've been running all these sub agents one by one, but you can actually chain them together as it suggests right here in the Claude code documentation. You can say in a prompt, first use the front end architect to create our user interface, then use the database agent to create our back end, then use the main agent to put them together, and then use the Bugbot QA agent to check all our code for any bugs and fix them. So that in one prompt, you can automate this entire workflow, which is huge. There you have it. Three simple yet powerful sub agents you can start using in your coding workflows right now. If you found this video helpful, or if you have any thoughts at all after trying out these sub agents for yourself, drop a comment down below. Some of you have shared some really cool, new and interesting workflows and coding tools in prior comment threads, and I honestly learn a lot from you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.